Hello everybody, it's Mike here at from Scratch, and today I am checking in with Sprite Stack. Why is that? Well, it's because a couple days ago someone said, hey, you should go check out Sprite Stack. And so I did. That's pretty much the only reason I've got. Uh, this is a pixel art editor, 3D pixel art. Um, it's based on the sprite stacking technique, which basically means that you are drawing your sprites in layers, and then they're kind of composed on top of each other. It's a lot like voxels. In fact, it is voxels. It all comes down to your workflow. Basically, it is voxels that are drawn in order in stacks. And you can see some of the end results here on screen. So here is a castle drawn. There is one of the layers. You draw a bunch more layers and you get a castle. Here are some other objects that have been drawn and created using uh, Sprite Stack. Now, if you're interested, Sprite Stack itself is available on the internet. It's Sprite Stack IO. Uh, it is a browser based tool and you come just basically go to Sprite Stack .io, click run editor and you are there. Now, one thing to be aware of right up front, uh, by default, you can only export to the public gallery. If you actually want to export out to save as an animated GIF as a Sprite sheet or anything else like that, you need to pay a $1. You will find that if you come up here to export, the free tier is only for submitting to the gallery, so you need to be at the dollar tier for exporting GIFs, slices, and sprite sheet, as well as access to experimental features. So, what exactly is this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you draw a layer of sprites one kind of pixel at a time until you have your object done. So, each layer is drawn accordingly. So, let's go ahead, come in here. We'll look at the tool. Here are your palette tools. You could use the WASD keys to navigate between them. Somewhat oddly, you cannot seemingly define your own colors, which is a huge limitation. Uh, here, you've got some controls and tools. So, you got your basic drawing tool, fill, uh, coloring, move, and extrude. And what we are going to do, we are in 3D view right now. What you can do is basically switch between top down or 2D view and 3D view. Your preview will be over here. And let's just go ahead. We're going to turn symmetry on, go to our draw tool, and we're going to build a skyscraper very quickly. So I'm going to come in here, pick this guy right here, click there, shift click to draw a line to there, shift click and shift click. So there is the basis of our skyscraper. So what we've done now is drawn one layer of sprite. So now what you want to do is just keep drawing more and more. Now what I could do is I could go back to the 2D view here and do an up arrow. So now I am on the second layer. So you use your scroll wheel uh, to go between layers. So there's the bottom myth and then I'm one on top of it. You can see an onion skin of the previous layer we just did. So now I could keep defining them. So if I did this, for example, and we were just drew it one layer in like that, you can get a slightly beveled effect as you're seeing right there in the result. You can just keep going. I could create a pyramid. So if I press up one more time, I could come up here and draw one more layer in. So you're basically using your wheel mouse to draw between layers and you're creating a 3D sprite kind of by stacking. Now what I'm going to do is undo both of those things. So let's get rid of, so we're back to our base layer. So we just have one stack now, I think. Let me just make sure that that's the case. All right. So here we are. I have my one sprite. I'm going to switch here to 3D view. Oh, no, I got rid of everything. All right, so I guess I'm going to start over. So I'm going to come in here. 3D view is sort of the same thing. It's just offset by one pixel each time you go up and down on the scroll wheel. So there we go. We got our base layer in drawn. You can see the end result there. And now I could go up and down and just start creating new ones as I go. But what I am instead going to do is come in here and pick extrude. And then we can just basically extrude that shell out until we've got to each layer we want. Now you'll notice this little cursor here. That is the current stack I am editing. So if I want to turn this guy into a building, let's go back up here to the topmost layer, flood fill, and fill that roof in like so. And we'll go back down to our very basic layer. We'll go to edit mode over here, pick a darker color. Let's go ahead and create a doorway. So let's start off adding a doorway to our world like that. And then arrow up one. And there you go. So there is our doorway into the world. And now we can go ahead, let's do some mirror or some um, windows into our world. So we just kind of click in like so. And now I'm adding some windows. And now I'm gonna go up to the next level, make my window a double height like this. By the way, right click to delete. Oops, that was a mistake. That created a freebie. I did not want to do that. All right, so there you see, now we have a set of windows in our world. We can continue this process as we go to the top of our sprites, the top of our skyscraper. So we are defining windows. It gets a little monotonous, but you get the idea. And there you see the preview of our building as we go. So let's go to our top level 
Here we're gonna do a beveled edge line around the, the edge to give us a little bit more contrast. So click there to there. Come on. Line to the corner, line to the corner, line to the middle. So that gives us a nice little shadow contrast around the outside edges. But as you can see, there is our building that we've created. Let's add a helicopter pad. So let's go to the very top here. We'll go to yellow, freeform draw. I'll draw in a circle ish all right and this is our helicopter pad so let's put the h for the landing like so so there you see as it would be shown now one thing you will notice is we're only getting the front face from the way we were drawing well that is because these are again stacks of sprites and i'm only really drawing the front of the sprite so i'll switch to the top view you'll see what i mean so there we are at the topmost level and i'm using the the arrow key to switch between each different version so we're scrolling down see there's where we have windows so we're, we're right around, so right now I am selecting the stack that is responsible for that line of pixels right there. So if we want to add uh, windows around the corner here, uh, we can just go ahead and do it in top-down mode. Like so, and let's go down one. I think it was here. If I have some jaggy ass windows, that's why. And now you'll see, you know, I missed. There you see we now have windows on this side of the building too. So we can go ahead. And create, oops, our second layer of windows. And there you see that one is slightly less messed up than the other one. So that's how this works. Basically, you're drawing a 3D object basically in slices of sprites. And your end result is an art style that is quite unique overall. And then once you've got it to where you want, so I'll switch here back to 3D view, you can actually come in here into um, paint mode and do some painting basically directly on your generated image. You don't have to go layer by layer. So I could come down here and we could add a corner edge bevel to our entire world as you saw right there and there. Now what is kind of frustrating and where if I was in a voxel editor this would be super simple, what I would do now is just orbit or pivot the world and give this back layer a drawing, uh, but you can't. And that that's kind of where this method of work kind of gets a little frustrated. So if I want to make that back layer and give that line there, I probably have to actually come into top down view and then basically go through each layer and add it back in. So, so you see what I mean? Like to draw this back line right here, I would actually have to go through each slice and add it in where I can't just ease. Ooh, that guy's a malformed guy. So there you see. So if I want it, and I think I missed one. Yeah, there we did. If I want to add detail, you have to add detail to every single slice in the list. But now we've got it. The drawing is in there. There is our building drawn one slice at a time. So that was it, a uh, very simple tool. If you wanna learn a little bit more, head on over to the help link. Uh, you've got some instructions here. First off, we've got a bit of a visual representation of how uh, sprite stacking actually works. So you get an idea of the concept behind this. Uh, you've also got some videos here showing you how to get started. So if, if what I showed you looked confusing, they do have a simple walkthrough, including a video showing you the process of actually creating a house um, using sprite stacking. Uh, it's very close to what we actually just did in scope. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of essentially, uh, what Sprite stack is all about. Now, am I going to use this going forward? Uh, probably not. To be honest, this kind of work, I don't see why I would move away from Magic of Oxel, but it is a different workflow. It is a different approach and it, it may appeal to, um, you guys. Let, actually, let me know. Do you see anything here that appeals to you or uh, play around with it for a couple minutes? Let me know if, if it's a workflow that you would find very useful or is it just pure gimmick? Uh, I'd be interested in hearing your opinion in the comments down below. Uh, again, you can just load up your browser and try it completely free, pretty much full functioning. So yeah, nothing really to lose but time. Uh, but yeah, that, that is uh, Sprite Stack available over at spritestack.io. Uh, kind of a simple little sprite generation tool using sprite stacking. All right, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.